Hi. Namaste. Uh, namaste Zen Zebras, Merry Mermaids, Merry Mermen, um, Unique Unicorns. I know you're out there. Zen Zebras, Namaste Ninjas, Bella Butterflies. Okay, I think I said everybody. Um, yeah, I'm at the post office. That's where I live. And I figure it's really hot, but I gotta push myself. I'm pushing myself to walk. And there's a nice little pathway. So, so I still have bubble wrap and tape in my hand because I didn't want to go to my car. Because if I go to my car right away, then I think it probably wouldn't walk. Because it's brutally hot, but it said it was only 98. But it does not feel 98. Anyway, that's what life is all about. Pushing yourself. Um, so, I remailed. Okay, I have a couple things to say. Alright. I don't know if you guys like these short videos that I do. Because um, my long videos, they don't really get any, that many likes. Um, anyhow, the short videos are nothing for me to do. No preparation or anything. And they're just kind of like vlogs. But I wanted to say that, well, there's a nice shady tree area, but I gotta keep moving. Move my legs um, so I don't get any fatter. <laughs> anyway, um, so I mailed out of the light your package. Now it is in a box and it is also, I sent it FedEx. So possibly you could get it Saturday. I hope everything is not broken. It didn't sound like it was broken and I really wrap it tight. Um, but I put extra bubble wrap in that I got from Lisa Sarn. Okay, so thank you, Lisa Sarn. I will use every single piece of bubble wrap. Um, that was number one. So I sent it, sent it FedEx. Let's see if it, it gets there nicer than the post office. Um, number two, Bella Butterfly. Um, I got my cards. I'm going to do an unbox. I have two unboxings to do. Um, so Bella Butterfly, thank you so much for my cards. Um, your graphic artist is a creative genius. The cards are so friggin' beautiful and the stickers are so friggin' beautiful. It really made me so happy. They were better, they came out better than I dreamed about. So she is like, I drew up a couple of pictures and she, what she did with it, she included a mermaid fin. She included a, a pot of gold. She included four leaf clovers. I'm talking about the Mystic Brady Bunch cards and stickers. Uh, she included uh, Lady Liberty. Oh my gosh, it's so creative and it's so beautiful. Deep purple background, right? All these colors, um, unicorn, uh, cats. I don't remember cats being on there, but it's still really cool. Even Devin said, I like those cats too. Um, so... I'm going to do the unboxing for my stickers and my, oh my sticker. It's like, I, now I really have, feel like I have a business. I know that my, my sub, I believe her name is Tony Gillespie from New York. I never see her on my thing anymore, but she made me cards twice. And Tony... If you're still out there, you still watch me, I want to send you something. I don't know if I ever sent you your thank you card, so please email me. Because I still have some of the cards that you made me, and I know you made them twice. And that was so beautiful of you to do. Uh, I really appreciate it. Um, so I will do the unboxings. Tony, email me. Um... I will now, um, I'm going to have the energy, now that I got my stickers and stuff, 
I will start putting together the people that won, the six people that won. I still don't have Dawn's address. <sighs> really hot over here. Um, I still don't have Dawn's address or Doreen Campbell. And if you don't want, if you don't want the the gift, um, let me know and I'll give it. I'll pick out two other names. Um, but, but if you do want the gift and you just don't have the shipping money, we can work it out, okay? I still want I still want to give you the healing art and the folder. Okay, because that's what the angels told me to do. So, I also want to give a shout out to Christine, who I call Christina. Thank you so much for your gift. I'm going to unbox it, if that's all right with you. I'm going to leave that so I have those two unboxings to do. I'm excited about it. And you didn't have to mail me anything, but... One second. One second. It's really hot. I'm in shade, so it feels good. There's my bracelet. <laughs> I didn't have to use this because the lady was nice enough to tape it up for me. Um, yeah, Bella Butterfly, I put your card in a, a envelope. And so, a yellow envelope, small one, but it's a bubble envelope. Um, so, that should be coming in a few days. So look out for that in your in your box. Okay. Um got what I was gonna say guys. The heat was getting to me. And I don't have a water bottle. As usual. Oh uh, this is my second day off a of soda. My diet my one diet coke. Sometimes I was sneaking in a second diet coke. But I'm just trying to see if it makes any difference. Because I've been having those bad pains. Um, yesterday, I did not take my uh, sec, my balance of nature. I took half of it. I didn't take the vegetables, though. So, I, I just still had cramps. I still felt like something was wrong down, down below. Okay, you know, my stomach. My lowest stomach and the cat belly. All right, so I go to the doctor. I go to the transvaginal ultrasound tomorrow in the morning. Oh, that's right, so I can't eat after what, 12 or 10. I know what some people are saying, no, you shouldn't be eating after that. Well, I have a problem when I take my medicine. I'm, I'm good, I'm pretty good during the night or day. Then when I take my medicine like one in the morning, um, something I've been thinking about eating somehow ends up in a bowl and I wake up and there's the bowl. Okay, and I'm like, what was that? A lot of times it's, if I have pains in my stomach, I make crackers with peanut butter. Which, I don't think that's that bad for you. But yes, I also had an apple. Um, apples are good, but it's just not at night, really. Uh, anyway. So I gotta be careful that I don't eat after 12, I think it is. And they didn't tell me to fill up with water, so I'm not gonna bother doing that. Um, yeah, I thought there was something else I was gonna tell you guys. Yeah, I'm not ready to do cancer. I don't have any notes written down on cancer. I'm not getting any feel yet, as of yet. But if I concentrated, I'm sure I would. Um, if you didn't see my Kyron Horman video, please go see it. I, I put a lot of energy into it. I really want your, I really want your um, opinions, maybe suggestions, maybe what you, feelings that you may get. Let's find these kids together. Let's find these people, right? We could do it together. Um, I did get a lot of hate, though, however. I got a lot of people saying, well, a couple people. I shouldn't say a lot. I'm not that popular, okay? Um, some people said, 20 minutes in, and you were mixing up the name of the father. Is the father Zane or um, 
Zane or Zane or I forget what I said, but yeah, I did it wrong. Hey, guess what? I'm I'm normal person. Um, trying to use my in a hot heated up car, trying to use my third eye and tap in. It's not that easy. Why don't you try it sometime? But um, I was like, have you met me? <laughs> I think Tracy said, uh, you must be new to the Mystic Brady Bunch. Yeah, and maybe she just clicked on because she saw Kyron Horman's name. And that's okay, but don't, don't, um, you know, if you have to catch a plane uh, or you've got to get to sleep, I'm not the person to watch, I guess. You know, watch me when you have nothing else to do. Um, it's a process, and I was trying my best doing four or five different cards and really, you know, trying my best to put everything together from meditating for like three or four days. I meditated, I watched everything I could watch, uh, factual and psychic wise, um, and that's my process. So, um, yeah, I got a lot of hate. Uh, because I messed up the name and I'm sorry for messing up the name usually I have everything written out there was a lot of characters in that story there's a lot of divorces and separations and husbands and ex-husbands and ex-wives and girlfriends and you know so I got it mixed up I am human doing a human experience doing a mystical mystical experience a human being doing yeah, a I'll, mystical I'll, experience not that easy should try it sometime. Anyway, yeah. So I got a lot of hate, but I'm not. I'm not against it. I'm not mad at it. Um, years ago, I would get all defensive and hurt, and now I'm like, that means you're getting popular. When you get the hate raiders, that means you're getting popular. When everybody's just nice and sweet, it means that you you are liked or you are loved, but not that popular <laughs> anyway I just it's not that I need to be popular I just want to get the messages out hold on a second guys I gotta get in this car where are my keys do you like getting a, a another coffee even though it's hot as blazes and I probably need water maybe I'll get a coffee and a water and Sonic Anyway, hold on a second, guys. <sighs> okay, so... 13 minutes, that's it? Okay. Yeah, it's pathetic. I remember doing the 30-minute walks. 40 minute walks or at least 25 minute walks. It's just too hot for me. I don't know. I don't want to dehydrate again. Oh, get the. Okay. I gotta get the air on. I just I almost went to scroll to see if anybody was saying what people were saying in chat, and then I remember this is a video. Okay. Oh my gosh, yeah, <sighs> too hot. Um, yeah, I, I think I said a couple of people asked me about the Rudy case. Um, that's going to be solved. That's fixing to get solved. Uh, I think the mother will get arrested soon. Um, it was definitely a lot of essay involved and drugging and, um, you know, emotional abuse, probably physical abuse too. And supposedly he was living in the yard or the basement or both. Um, and neighbors ha happened to see him. Um, you know, and I think he's special needs. So the mother convinced him that, you know, he would get arrested and go to jail if he showed himself. Uh, he might've ran away for like two days on his own but I don't even believe he did that one. Maybe he ran away because he was getting abused. Abused. I say abused. <laughs> like my unicorn. 
my favorite color. All right, guys, I don't know if I have anything else. I just wanted to let you guys know uh, Bella Butterfly. I got the cards and they are freaking awesome. And I got the cards and the stickers and I got your check out of the mail. It was on the way to you and then they're telling me I owe them 40 more cents. So instead I bought a little bag for $1.79 and, and I sent it and to send it in that little bag was seven or eight dollars something like that but that's that's the post office everything's expensive guys everything um so uh and of the light i wanted to let you know thank god at least thank god i got the canvases back because that's five pieces of that's like the biggest um biggest sale I ever made no I made a sale I think the biggest sale I ever made was to White Dove back in 2020 remember that but I don't know if I knew how to pack it I don't know I, I don't remember her anymore but um anyhow I was like praying for that and thank God God is good all the time and God watched over that package so you should be getting it soon hopefully Saturday knock on wood um, and I will do the unboxing for Christina from Colorado and she used to live in California so she was my ladybug looking for um, the boys in Cali my sincere and, and classic my grandsons and if anybody doesn't know why I call them my grandsons they're not biologically my grandsons but they are emotionally my grandsons and they asked me to be their grandmother. Um, they told me I'm a good grandmother. So I might not have grandkids ever in this lifetime, but they are my grandsons. Um, and I thank you, Christina, um, Isabel, for, for helping me on that case I, I you and mm maureen um she helped me too and then for maya um she helped me for that one maureen um and also yeah i have a couple of and then for the suzanne morphew case you said you worked on that when you moved to colorado and i thank you if a ladybug means um years ago when I first started doing my channel and started doing crime cases, um, I tried to find people from wherever the state was and ask them, could you, if you live kind of close or if you can, could you please be part of the search? Could you try to um, find out information or go search? Um, and if they did, they were called the ladybug. If they were a man, ladybugs are men too okay right <laughs> um so they were part of you know the mystic brady bunch uh and i truly like i haven't found that many people to do that lately i would love it um especially kyron horman anybody that lives in in the portland area um and you could, you know, find out some things or maybe look in that spot that I was describing. I know it sounds, it might sound like I was vague. Um, so we have, and like, I haven't found anybody in Tennessee. So I don't think people like me in Tennessee. I don't know. Maybe they're scared or something. Um, but like, I did a lot of work for summer and as a l other people have, I'm sorry, I'm sweating like a bastard whore in, in church um, so let's put the bangs away um, anyway I have not seen that many people that live in um, Tennessee ever connect with me um, and then of course I think everybody hates me then um, you know it's part of my paranoia will destroy you but um, anyhow if there's anybody in Tennessee Rogerville or anywhere in Tennessee and you like me a little bit or you know that my mission is for good and I don't do any of these cases for money I do them from my heart and I just want 
the parents or the family members um, to have peace and give their child a decent burial or if their child is still alive to get some sort of closure and find them. Um, so those are the places, you know, that I do videos on. I look for people who are, quote, ladybugs that or want to be part of the Mystic Brady Bunch to please help us out. Um, and if you're interested in that, please email me. Um, my email is Katrina, all lowercase, Katrina 8.8.kb .8 at gmail.com. But I'll put it in the comments of this video, okay? I don't want to talk too much because uh, I'm sweating my balls off. I'm sweating my metaphorical balls off, okay? I have other balls to sweat off. <laughs> it's it's more fun to say you're sweating your balls off because it brings me back to the summers in New York. Okay, anyway. Um, yeah, I think that's it. You guys have any questions? Let me know. All right. Now, today I feel like this is a, a Saturday, a straight up Saturday, but it yet it's Tuesday, right? No, it's not even Tuesday. It's Wednesday. Okay. <laughs> it's Wednesday. Okay. So tomorrow is my test. And yeah, I'm sure I'm going to have anxiety uh, because I've watched all the things. I've gotten it before because I had two kids, you know, so I've gotten them before. And I've also had a lot of, I have endometriitis. So I've had a lot of gynecological problems and my tubes burnt off and um, two DNCs or maybe more, uh, 75 stitches on the episiotomy. <laughs> it's rough being a woman. Yes, it is. But I think every day I'm alive and every day that I can get up. And I said a prayer today I, because, you know, I wake up and I don't feel well. I feel like the blood is cement either that or sand somebody poured sand in me and I'm taking my thyroid pills so I don't understand what it is but it's a heaviness and uh, a bloated feeling and a heaviness and you know some days I could try to do like exercise exercises on my phone you know I'll just stand up and do some standing exercises um, when I was doing the laying down exercises, the last time when I thought I had a, a fallen bladder or a, a tilted uterus or whatever it was, a pelvic, I don't know, dropped uterus, whatever it is. I might still have it, but I got myself so, it, everything starts here, right? Whether you have a pain somewhere else, everything starts in your mind. That's why I believe in the chakra practice. So the chakras that they told me I needed was a lot of orange. And then I looked around my room and I couldn't even stare at anything orange because I really only had one. I had Dana, which just went to, went to Colorado, never made it to Colorado, was sent back to Texas. So now it's being sent to Colorado again. Anyhow, um, so I made a couple of orange thing pieces so that I can look at them. Um, and then I started doing the affirmations because I fall off, even though I tell you guys to do it, I fall off the wagon too. Um, but I just ask God and uh, Archangel to let Archangel Michael and Archangel Raphael come and heal me or at least tell the doctor what the heck is wrong with me you know like it can't be nothing it can't all be in my head so that's why I said like sometimes when your blood is good and everything your labs all came out good you, you try to tell yourself well then you're good but then the other part of your brain says well then what are you just making up all this pain that you have no I'm not making up that pain the pain that I'm having is the pain that you have when you're a young girl okay this is a not, not a young girl over here this is an old dude right fixing to be 60 right 60 six oh six I can't make it I can't do it with my fingers anyway these nails are getting so long I'm, I can't even text 
So I gotta get them shortened in a different color. But I might leave this. Okay, so um, just being silly. Uh, but the pains that I have are like when you are a young girl turning into a young woman and they're straight up menstrual cramps. That's what I feel. Then it's a little bit up high. It travels up high, but it starts low. And it's sometimes it's on my right side. Sometimes it's on, my, and then I think it's, you know, my um, sigmoid intestine. Okay. Because well, I do body scans. I do do body scans on myself and other people. Um, and I've been getting stronger with them. So. I've been doing body scans and it's all here. It's not the breast. It's the abdomen, the intestines, the uh, female organs. And uh, yeah, it's just creepy. But anyhow, um, I ask God to please allow Archangel Raphael to heal me or let me know what it is that's wrong so I can make it right and he can heal me and God could heal me um, and so I'm taking one step and the one step well I took I took a lot of steps because I always pray I do pray and I also lit my cat candle and my palo santo and sometimes I straight up have to light it for myself okay um I don't think, and but I don't have bleeding, but maybe I don't have bleeding because they cut my fallopian tubes out years ago in 2005, uh, tubal ligation it's called, um, I don't know, I don't know what's going on, uh, I'm way past menopause, like I went into menopause at 47, um, I had my like last DNC where they burnt everything out, uh, and that was 2010. Yeah. February, May. Well, I had a bad incident in February where I bled every single day except two days. So it was almost a whole month I bled. And so I would say I had the um, last DNC where they burn everything out in your, in your uterus. And that's supposed to help you. Um, and that was in May of 2010. A lot of stuff happened in 2010. Um, and then I still bled a little bit, but I haven't seen blood really since that, since I would say maybe July or August of 2010. So I did have a little blood. I know this is creepy. So like, you know, if you can't take this kind of talk, then you could switch off now at 28 minutes. Um, but, you know, it's helpful for other people might have it. Um, I did see a lot of, uh, a little blood um, when I went to the bathroom. And, you know, I, I mostly have diarrhea. Um, and I had to give a specimen to the hospital. I'm pretty sure that came out okay, too. But I never, nobody ever told me, okay, all these things are clear. But... Yeah, I think that probably the next step after this test would be that I definitely need, well, of course, I need the mammogram. That's, I'm late on that. But I I don't feel like, I feel like everything's okay here. It doesn't look good, but it's okay. You know what I mean? Um, and my mother tells me, you know, that's not good. It's not good. It, that was me. That's not going to be you. Okay? That's what she says. Okay, that's what she said the last time. Because uh, I had a bad scare in and biopsy in 20, uh, 2014. And um, I prayed to let to God and my mother to, can I please, you know, finish out that year. And then I just need to finish out the next year, 2015, um, because we were getting married at the end of 2015. Um, and I needed, you know... I need it to be okay so that I can get married and at least have some time with Devin. So I felt like they kept that promise because they said I was stable because I have um, 
micro calcifications, but it was like at a high account. It was like, um, there's like level 1A, then level 1B, and then 1C, then level 2, then 2A, 2B, 2, I was 4C, level 4C, um, as being possibly malignant or something bad. And then they did the biopsy, I remember, because Devin took me for it and then he dropped me off and he had to go to work the next day. So I don't know if I went to work the next day, I'm not sure, but you have to remember Devin had young teenage kids in his house and I was living in my apartment alone. So I went home and then, you know, when you get a biopsy, um, of course it hurts, but I told them, make sure I am numb. Now. Like, that's the scary thing, because some people say, oh, they might give you a biopsy when you're getting a transvaginal uh, ultrasound. I don't think so. I don't think they would do that. Only if they see something, then they'll send me back. But I don't think so. Anyhow, I still might have to take something, some kind of uh, anxiety. I'll, I'll definitely be wearing my pad on my hand, because um, that helps me sleep or that helps me you know, not stress out as much. But anyway, so I did see blood that one time, but then the time that I put it in the specimen cup and brought it to the hospital, I didn't see blood that time. So then I'm thinking, oh, now they're not gonna see anything because it was the other time. But I think that if I don't see blood, am I good? Okay, <laughs> I don't know, it's so, it's, it's so hard to be a person and getting older, but I've had these kind of problems. You know, I had ulcers and I had um, H. pylori. Uh, and then I found out I have Hachimoto's, um, keeping in H's, uh, which is an immune situation. Um, which gives me the moon face and P.S. I'm fat. So, you know, I have a mirror. Okay, I have a scale and I have a mirror. I know what I look like, um, but my skin's all right. So there's that, okay? You gotta, you gotta balance things out for yourself, make yourself happy. Um, anyway, you know, God is good and it, you just keep your prayers up and you keep, uh, your hopes up and always think positively and it's hard to think positively when you're scrolling on YouTube and you're scrolling on Google, Dr. Google, and you're finding all these stories um, and these people that have you know, like channels, you know, I have cancer, I have colon cancer, I have stomach cancer, I have um, uterine cancer. <laughs> so <laughs> it's like, I know I'm supposed to not do that. So then I try to go on another station or if I do videos, then I'll watch myself. Yeah, what a narcissist. No, but I watch myself so that I could see what I did and see what I could do better. And maybe I'll, it'll take my mind off of, you know, going to channels and see, seeing people that have cancer and then making it in my head. Like that prolapse uterus thing. Uh, retocelli, like meaning that the uterus was sitting on the on your rectum and your rectum and your uterus were coming out and I was like I can't do it I can't do it I thought I had it all and when I went to the hospital they gave me a CT scan twice I was in the hospital like twice um, this has been rough for me um, but they don't find anything they didn't see anything and I had contrast so that's what I said to the to the gynecologist. I said, maybe to the gynecologist's nurse, because you know, you don't talk to the doctors, they're the president, right? Remember I told you that? Oh, I wish I had a hair thingy in here because it's getting too hot. Boom. I usually do have a hair thingy. Sorry, I forgot what I was saying. Yeah, I totally flipped out with that recto prolapse thing. I was 
crying my eyes out. I was watching all these things. <laughs> See, I haven't like, and this is so weird because maybe I've been doing the right exercises. I don't know, the pelvic exercises. But before this, a lot of times I was peeing my pants or I had to wear a pad. I know this is gross, but this is real life, guys. Ah. I'm just trying, I'm trying to find a, a band because I got to get my hair up. I'll take it off the cards. I put bands on cards. <sighs> Let me just get my hair up, guys. Oh. Yeah, so I said to the nurse of, the, of my doctor, I said, you know, could you, do I definitely have that prolapse thing. I mean, she took me in her office, showed me the books. That's why this time I'm taking Devin. I told Devin, you have to come in her office with me to talk because I want to know answers to questions. And when I'm in shock, I just go like, oh, okay. Oh yeah. Yeah. I could do that. Yeah. Go to this hospital, go to that, get this test, that test. Oh yeah. Fine. Because I, and then I go home and I'm, I don't want to do that. And I like this doctor. I really do. I don't want to get on her bad side because she's really like compared to my New York doctor, my New York gynecologist. Um, she was like, you know, like I, I would get called back for pap smears and I don't know. She was like so nasty to me. And then I figured it out. Why is she so nasty? And mean and she would hurt you you know like every time she was doing a pap smear you would really you would cringe you would cry like I would have a tear what are you crying for that was nothing oh really really bitch okay <laughs> you get up on the table and let me get busy with the knife and a scalpel and <laughs> anyway <laughs> it was almost like she was trying to torture me because her husband was the man that everybody fell in love with. Why did we fall in love with him? He wasn't handsome. He wasn't tall, okay? <laughs> but he had a nice personality. He was our, he delivered our babies. He was a OGYN, gynecologist, OGBYN. But I guess she would get all the other patients because she, both of them were doctors. Both of them were the same doctor. O-G-B-Y-N, N-Y-C. <laughs> you know what I'm saying, right? O-B-G-Y-N, okay. Both of them were gynecologists and delivered babies, right? But he was more popular than her. Plus, she had three babies of herself on her own. And that's what she would say to me a lot. Like, what's the big deal? You only have two kids. I had, I had three kids. And I had a set of twins or something like Like, she was so mean. And I'm think, I'm trying to think, why is this bitch so mean to me? I'm like, you know, sweet. Uh, I, I'm like just scared. You know, uh, I was older than her, of course. And I figured it out. It's because every butt patient that her husband had, he couldn't take them anymore because he had way too many patients. So he would give them to her. And nobody wanted to go to her because A, she hurt. B, she was mean. C, she wasn't him. Okay? She wasn't Dr. Herzog. So, um, it was like she was trying, she was mad that we were mad that we were seeing her. <laughs> it was a weird combination. Anyway, I, you know, like you say, we'll try to go to somebody else. You know, and a lot of times I wanted to go to somebody else. I didn't want to go to them, any of them at all. But he had all my records and... I just wanted to see him. I would call up and then, but you know, she knew that people were falling in love with him left and right. And it got so bad that when I had my son, Thomas, he came into the room. <laughs> he came into the room. There's a couple of stories with Dr. Herzog. He came into the room and he said, Hey, you know, how you doing? How you feeling? And I was like, Oh, okay. Uh, hurts a lot, you know, because I had 75 stitches. Thank you, I think. No, no thank you. I should have had a, a C-section. Um, but he didn't want to do C-sections because he had like a record that he was trying to keep up. 
the doctor that gives the least amount of C-sections in Staten Island, New York. Anyhow, um, so he's like, how you doing? Like, he's just like peeking through the curtain, like, because he didn't want to really put, pull himself in fully. And then he sees my sister Karen had given me this big glass jar of peanut butter cups, right? Little peanut butter cups wrapped. And he was like, ooh, peanut butter cups. Can I have some? I go, sure, sure. So he's taking one. He's taking a bite. He goes, so who do you think the baby looks like? <laughs> who do you think your son Thomas looks like, right? <laughs> and he's taking the bite. And he's enjoying his chocolate, right? And I go, well come to think of it, Dr. Herzog, he kind of looks like you. <laughs> He's like, what? Mm -hmm. <laughs> He's like in the middle of chilling and he jumps out and he walks out. Oh, I gotta go. <laughs> he runs out. He runs away. I don't think I saw him for the longest of time. When I got um, exited, he just came, he didn't come see me, he came to see uh, my husband, ex-husband Tom, and just signed the papers, and the nurse came in and said, oh yeah, the doctor released you, you can go home now after three days. So, anyway, um, he was bald, right? <laughs> he had brown eyes, <laughs> and a mustache, I think, and so... How can he look like my son had, well, my son really looked like my father. He looked like a truck driver. He was nine pounds, four ounces. And so his eyes were like squinty like mine, like my father and mine, right? But they definitely were blue. Um, just like well, newborns always have blue eyes. But I knew he'd have blue because my ex-husband had big blue eyes and my daughter had blue eyes and everybody blue eyes right both sides of the grandparents um but there was some green eyes in there in the family too anyhow <laughs> i remember my friend christine valvick saying why would you tell him that it looks like his baby as if like you know you had an affair with him and it was his baby <laughs> and i said i don't know what was wrong with me i just really thought the baby looked like him Maybe because he was bald? I don't know. Yeah, Thomas was bald when he was born. So was Laura. And um, so was I. But then he started to get little brown hair. And then Thomas went platinum blonde when he was real little. And then he started getting dark. Laura used to get blonde in the summer and then turn dirty blonde in, in the fall and the winter. Um, but anyhow... <laughs> Um, so there was that, and then there was the time, I might as well tell you everything, <laughs> no wonder why he wouldn't see me again. Then, um, at least I didn't go to him for drugs. Like, I know other people who went to him, not anybody close to me, but they, they were like, oh, they had a backache or what, and they would get Oxycontin or some sort of drugs. And I was never offered, I was never... Um, you know, I had lots of pain. Like, he, I remember him writing down. Um, so how, after like this six week visit or the one week visit and then the six week visit, he did see me those two times. <laughs> and then he said, uh, <laughs> you know, has everything going? You feel physically you're back to normal and everything? I go, oh no. When I am, he goes, oh, what's the matter? And he takes his clipboard and his writing. <laughs> pretending he cares <laughs> and I said okay put it this way when I walk if I take two steps you know and I used to be a walker a big walker you know that's how I would try to lose my weight I would walk around the neighborhood and walk push the carriage or whatever and I said when I take two steps it's like somebody standing under me with an axe going like that drunk okay <laughs> so he got scared his face got red and he goes has feels like axe is hitting her in the uh vagina <laughs> nothing was ever done about it i was never offered a pill <laughs> hey i tried no i didn't back then i 
all clean, you know. Back then, my both of my kids wasn't a, I wasn't a big drinker. I wasn't a big. Um, I didn't take any drugs. I never did the white stuff. Um, I didn't even smoke the brown stuff, the Bob Marley stuff, because it wasn't my thing. I smoked cigarettes um, in between things, you know. Um, but then I gave that up. Anyhow. I, I I wanted to know you know what what the what everybody else was getting so he never gave me anything and then you know maybe that's a godsend because I don't want to be a drug addict when I had my back problem and my neck problem and they started giving me stuff that wasn't until 2013 I believe um, and I had one bottle of whatever they gave me for six months to a year so you know but <clears throat> I can honestly say you get addicted to that stuff and it's a half hour of peace and heaven and six months of hell when you try to get off of it so it's a good thing to, and I did I did that with a lot of prayers too and I just had a light you know a light issue with it um, but anyhow so that's why I guess the doctor didn't want to see me anymore. Oh, the, my last meeting with him was, I guess I was maybe two months in, and I remember I had the baby on the floor. I guess my husband was working nights then. I'm not sure. Oh, maybe this was a day appointment. I, I'm not sure. Where was Laura? Oh, Laura was at school, because Laura was like in kindergarten, first grade. So, um... Yeah, she was in first grade by then. So she was probably at school. I was in the doctor's office and uh, I had him in the little, the little, you know, the little car seat thing that turns into one of those rocker things. And so I remember I put him on the floor and I had worked on, I don't know where I found the time, but I worked on, I was always artsy. And I, I got these ceramic angel heads because I, I was so into painting angels Okay, see, this didn't just happen with me. I've been seeing angels and painting angels and wanting to give everybody angels for a long time, okay? But some people don't want the angels, okay? And I, is it true that Jewish people don't believe in angels or the whole angel realm? I'm not sure. So, anyhow, well, he was Jewish, my doctor. I think, I think so. Anyway, or German, German Jewish, I'm not sure. So anyway, I made these, the, these were little cherubs, heads of cherubs, right? You feel me? You know where this is going? Some people know where this is going and some people are like, what the heck happened? Who wouldn't like a cherub? Okay, apparently not my doctor. <laughs> so, um... I um, I painted them the best that I could. Some of them looked like they had big red lipstick on them, okay? And I had these little boxes and I put tissue paper in them and I wrapped them all up and then I knew it was like that was gonna be my last visit. I, I must have known psychically he was probably never gonna see me again. <laughs> and then like transfer me over to his wife, just like he did these other people because she probably never gave out a, a pill and he probably got all these women addicted to pills or used to these pills and then all of a sudden he was like I got a problem ma'am I got a problem wife and she was like oh you son of a bitch you did it again <laughs> I'll take them and so she, anyhow I just psychically knew it was probably going to be close to the end um so I said, oh, before I go, I have, I brought you this little thing I made. And he's sitting there, he's like, what? Like, first of all, that's not how you open a present. Maybe I should have gave him peanut butter cups. <laughs> oh, I, I forgot to tell you, I was going to try to find a job in the hospital. At the time, my sister worked in Staten Island. She was a nurse and she was in urgent care. And so I was asking her for help. I wanted a job to clean up the afterbirth of women who had babies. 
I needed that job. I wanted that job. So my sister was talking to me. She was like, this is postpartum depression. You just, you, you, you got attached to the man that delivered your baby because he's so nice and sweet and you transferred, you know, how your husband is supposed to be, which he wasn't, um, to the person that was really kind to you when you're having, you know, was such a special time in your life. And it's totally normal, but you're not getting a job as a cleanup uh, nurse. I said, not a nurse. I said, you gotta get me into that. I'll do the night shift. I'm used to being up at night. She goes, Kathleen, who's gonna take care of your baby and your daughter? I was like, no, my husband will be home then. I just need one of those shifts. Can't you get help me? You've been working in that hospital 20 years now. Come on. Help me. I'm your sister. I need to do it. I'll be good at it. <laughs> She's like, you are not going to clean up the placenta. And then she she was like, okay, talk to your best friend. So I talked to Christine Valvik. And Christine Valvik goes, Kath, I had this doctor. He was my doctor. I got him to be your doctor. It happens to everybody. It happened to me. I was like, what? She goes, you fall in love with him. It'll pass. It'll pass. <laughs> I was like, no, I think I just need that job. Give me that job. Help me get that job. She's like, <laughs> I don't know. I, I don't understand how I thought I was going to take care of the baby. I was breastfeeding too. <laughs> so I, and I did have postpartum blues with um, my son, not with my daughter, with my son. I did. I'm not crying. I'm just trying to wipe the sandy makeup out of my eyes. Anyway, so he's opening up the heads, right? <laughs> I thought it was such a beautiful thing. I mean, I I didn't have that much time, so I I tried to do as much a nice paint job as I could, and it was like three boxes. And for some reason, I thought I visualized these cherubs would be hanging up on the walls because he delivers babies and that's close to angels right you see where I was going with that I wasn't trying to be creepy or like hey you know meet me at the hotel at 12 you know I didn't I wasn't interested in that I wasn't even saying hey you look like my son <laughs> maybe he's my you are our son <laughs> I didn't even say that right I wasn't even feeling that anymore because he it, then Thomas started to change and oh he was what a cute baby I mean Laura was too but doesn't everybody think their babies are cute uh, I don't have any of those pictures because my ex-husband has them and he was supposed to get the films made into two films so that I can have some of them and give me the pictures and I can't find the baby picture so it'll make me cry that'll make me cry I have very few of the baby pictures so anyhow Thomas looked like he was six months old when he was like two months old, okay? Everybody treated him as if he was older. He didn't look like a newborn because he was so big. Anyhow, um, so he's opening up the the cherubs and then all of a sudden he, he, he goes, oh, oh, all right. And I go, they're angels that, because you deliver babies. And I'm trying to like say this to them. Like, you know, when you give somebody a gift and they look at you like, and they don't say thank you. Uh, or they say thank you with a question mark. And you're like, oh, they're not getting it. So I'm trying to explain it. And then that takes away from the gift. Then I feel like a freakazoid. And then the nurse, then he leaves the room because he says he has to do something. Never comes back. I knew that was coming. I knew that was coming because he did the same thing when, you know, he was eating the chocolate and asked me how I'm doing and uh, who do I think uh, Thomas looks like. <laughs> As a matter of fact, doctor, he looks like you. I think he looks like you. And he's like, what? Oh. And he runs away. <laughs> He ran away. I don't even know if I told my husband that. I don't think I told him. I don't know. He didn't really listen to me. I, I definitely told him I wanted to go to work at the hospital. And of course he said that was nuts. <laughs> but he just like dismissed me, I think. Um, 
But yeah. <laughs> so the statues are sitting on his desk. He leaves. He runs out of the office. I'm sitting there. I have the baby on the floor, right? In the little carrier. And then a nurse comes in and says, oh yeah, the doctor um, had to take a very important conference call. But you're all done. You could go. I'll walk you out. <laughs> oh, your baby's so cute. <laughs> okay, so, so aren't I a weirdo? I don't mean to be. And I understood it, like what my sister Karen told me. She was like, this is all normal. You know, you, you're you going to be okay. You have to express it. And then I actually got involved with a um, postpartum, you call them, and the person came to my condo maybe twice and then she always called me and I called her when I wanted to too and it did it slowly passed like it went from just feeling a state in a state of panic and I didn't understand why I didn't have that at 24 when I had my daughter um, but they said that it's all hormones and because I had a traumatic birth with him I mean uh, uh, Laura's was uh, pushing for 16 hours, bleeding, and them cutting, you know, putting a a needle up there to break the water, because I never break the water on my own, <clears throat> probably from the tilted uterus or whatever there's going on in there, and um, but 16 hours of pushing, and then it had to be an emergency C-section. I stayed in the hospital seven to eight days, because both of us were sick, So, but I still didn't get postpartum blues with her with Thomas I felt like the whole world like I just lost my father two years before that and I just felt like the I don't know I felt like it was the end of the world and it was scary it was a scary time but I came out of it slowly I did a lot of art I started um, looking for a place to do my art and I did. I found this lady who just lost her husband, I think. She lived in a big old house and she had a, a, a shed in the backyard and she let me set up my stuff in there and I was going to pay and she said, you know what, if you bring your baby, your infant son and let me take care of him and you can go and paint. And then, so th that was okay, but then it started to get creepy and then sometimes I would come without him, just, you know, my husband was home. So I let him babysit for a little while, let mommy go and do her art um, in somebody's shed where I can get murdered. <laughs> anyway, she started to get weird. And then she was like, Wait, where's Thomas? Where's baby Thomas? And I was like, oh no, my husband wanted to spend some time with him. And she was like, well, the deal was that you bring him, I babysit for him and you go in the back. And I'm thinking to myself, what exactly was she doing with my son? So I was like, well, uh, my son, my husband, you know, is on a different shift now, so he he's can take care of him. And he, she was like, well, that wasn't the deal that we had. And she was an artist, but she just like, you know, stopped doing it. And then I was like, oh, how about I pay you the money then? You know, since I'm not bringing my son for you to do God knows what. Uh, how about I pay you the money, whatever it was, you know, like I couldn't afford that much because I, I don't think I was working then. But um, I said, I'll pay you the money. And she goes, oh, no, guess what? Um, I'm going to need your key back. And also um, because I started, I said, did I do something wrong? And she goes, I need all your stuff out of there because I'm going to be doing my art stuff. I decided you inspired me to start doing my art stuff and I was like she had a whole friggin Victorian house whole Victorian mansion right nobody lived there but her right maybe a dog I don't even remember if there was a dog but she had a whole Victorian house she just wanted me out she wanted me out see okay so I was like okay packed up all my stuff and I, I hated giving her the key because there was another thing she didn't like that I did where I never knew I, I, I'm so ADD that I didn't know when I can get there so I, if I could pull some time from here or there I can get there 
Um, so she didn't like when I would go there without like letting her know I was coming. <clears throat> and I could understand that totally. But I feel like she wanted to talk to me or she just wanted to have the baby and it just got creepy. The whole thing was creepy and I was like, uh, and then I, I, I did a stint at my brother's house in his attic with my stuff and then all of a sudden he didn't want me there and then I had my stuff at my mother-in-law's house in her basement then she didn't want me there and I was like well she would come down and look at my stuff and talk to me and I said well the whole point of me getting here and and doing is to be alone to do my art I need time alone I'm with my kids all day you know and she's like oh excuse me what are you the queen of England and I was like no I told you what I needed this space for I needed to be able to do my art and have space because I was living in the condo and I had no room in there. So it's always been an issue, like a place to do my art um, until I found Devin. I mean, until I, when I was in my apartment, when I got divorced, I was like, now I have I could do art here, but I didn't have a table, okay, so I had to find a table that somebody was throwing out, and then I had a table, and then I started doing my art again, because I had stopped for a while, uh, a few years, I had stopped, you know, there was a lot of stress going on, and I had a career, and kids, and stuff like that, so anyhow, I have spoken too long, I am so sorry, namaste, love you guys.